In this video, we're going to take a look at how to create a state-driven camera system in Cinemachine. We're going to look at the state-driven camera component and how we can use an animator to drive camera behaviors, as well as how to customize the transitions between states. In this scene, we have a virtual camera and it's moving on a track following our character as they walk across the screen. If our character stands still, they move into an idle animation state. I'd really like to make this idle state more interesting by changing how our camera looks. I'd also like a special camera shot that cuts into our character whenever they pick up an item. We can use Cinemachine's state-driven camera system to swap between different virtual camera setups based on the states of any animator component in our game. So, we're going to create different virtual camera behaviors and transition between them based on the state our character is in. First, let's create a state-driven camera in our scene by going to Cinemachine, Create State-Driven Camera. This creates a state-driven camera game object in our hierarchy. The Virtual Camera Children property in the Inspector defines all of the virtual cameras that our state-driven camera is going to use. We might not need every Cinemachine camera in our scene to be driven by this system, so any cameras that already exist in our scene, such as our original virtual camera, will need to be parented to the state-driven camera in order to be used. It's also worth noting that we can press the plus or minus button underneath the Virtual Camera Children property box to automatically add or remove new virtual cameras to our state-driven camera. After we've set up the shots on each of our virtual cameras, we're ready to set up our states. States can be triggered by any animator component in our scene. For example, if we were making an action-adventure game, the state system could be driven by an animator during an environmental set-piece event such as focusing on an explosion in the background, or perhaps as an enemy arrives to confront the player. We could also create an animator specifically for the camera and swap between states with custom scripted events. In our game, however, I'd like the camera changes to be triggered by the states in the player's animator. So let's assign the player's animator to the animated target property. Once we have an animated target, our state-driven camera can then assign any of these states to a specific virtual camera. Let's assign the walking state to our first camera, the idle state to our second camera, and then finally, all of the other non-walking animation states to our third camera. If we run our game, we can see that the camera immediately changes and enters the idle state. Ideally, we'd like the camera to change after a period of inactivity. So let's change the weight property on our idle state to 5. Cinemachine will then wait 5 seconds before transitioning to this camera after the state has been entered by the animator. By default, Cinemachine will perform a blend when changing between the states. We can define the type of blend performed and how long the transition will take by changing the default blend settings in the inspector. If, however, we'd like to define a specific blend type to a specific change of state, such as the cut to a close-up when interacting with an item, we can create a custom blend asset using the custom blend property and clicking create. Once created, we can choose specific blend settings for each of our state changes. Now, when we play our scene, we have a much better looking set of transitions between each of our camera types. As you can see, the state-driven camera system allows us to quickly set up and define different shot types between different animation states with ease. For more information on Cinemachine, 
and for more Unity tutorials, please follow the links below. Thanks for watching.